live in a, in a capitalist economy, and we talk an awful lot about uh, investing in human capital and uh, preserving capital and um, growing capital. And I think the, the idea of uh, natural capital is just to say, hold on, there's a whole another set of assets that we need to be thinking about and quantifying and measuring and comparing alongside these other investments that we make. So that's the, the basic intuition, is to recognize that this is part of our wealth, it's part of our, um, our natural inheritance, but it's also part of our economic inheritance, and we need to manage it and not run it down. Uh, we need to preserve that capital and, and enhance it. People have always valued farmland. That's part of natural capital. They've valued forests. Um, they've valued fisheries as well. But what, what we've discovered is that a, many of these natural assets produce other benefits over and above the commodities, the crops, the timber, the fish that we get from, from natural wealth. So there are other benefits, other ecosystem services that are not recognized and rewarded. And I think we've also learned that if you don't have good institutions to manage these, these assets, um, we, um, they disappear fisheries being the, the classic example. Uh, if you don't restrict access, if you don't control how much people take out of, of nature, uh, unfortunately, um, capitalism being what it is and the com competitive markets being what they are, people tend to run down the open access resource very quickly. And the atmosphere is uh, the ultimate open access resource until people put a cap on emissions and say, hold on, there's a limit to how much junk we can put into the atmosphere. Um, and similarly, people are applying the same approach to water quality, to habitat conversion, to any number of other um, components of natural wealth.